YouTube, what's going on, man? It's your boy Xerxes, and dang, I I'm kind of at a loss for words, man. I am so, I'm not, I don't know if I've ever been this hyped for a league in my life. So the uh, 3.25 uh, expansion video just dropped earlier today. Uh, I wanted to watch the video, go over everything first, and then kind of just give you guys a TLDR of just the um, expansion video and what uh, Mark talked about in here. Um, in case you don't want to sit through the whole thing, I would definitely recommend watching this video though it is it's it's sick there's a lot of changes and i'm fucking as hyped as i've ever been for a league so um i prepared a little uh cheat sheet just gonna kind of let this play in the background while i go over some of the things that i thought were the most pertinent okay so what is 3.25 it's settlers of calgar so basically what you're going to be doing in here is when you go through your maps and through the the campaign you're going to find some uh, some of these areas right here You'll basically walk up to them, some enemies will spawn, you'll kill them, and then what'll happen is there's going to be like a town that you're going to have to go to and hire people. Once you hire them, they'll come in and they'll basically mine the resources out of these little veins that you find throughout your maps, right? And then what you'll do is you'll go back in the town when you first start, it's going to be pretty barren, right? There's not going to be a whole lot of stuff. So as you're going through uh, these maps and areas, you'll find gold, right? And what you can do is use the gold to build the town up and hire people uh, to do all different different sorts of jobs. So there's people that'll be miners. Um, there's people that you can use to transform items and materials into other things. Um, let's see here. You can get people that will run your maps for you, which is absolutely insane. Like I've never seen anything like this in a path of exile game. So that's cool. You can just get passive income, um, by hiring these guys to go and run your maps that you don't want to run, which is, which is nuts, right? Uh, there's some other people in there that you can use to recombine items. So they're bringing the recombinators back. Um, you can buy black market items items which have like really high base rolls apparently so there's like an insane amount of things that you can do with this league this is just kind of scratching the surface right so the ultimate like kind of goal or one of the ultimate goals is that you're going to find all these materials have people farm for stuff do all this shit right and then you're going to take them and you're going to send them on a, a journey basically to go to another port sell your stuff and bring back your goods so um the, the problem is is that you can come across like pirates that'll steal your shit right so there's a percentage chance that they don't make it back so you can hire people that are really good at protecting your your cargo and it'll decrease that that chance of them not making it back right so let's say you send someone on a mission they go and sell all your stuff they come back and you can have three four tabs worth of just crazy loot so it's it's going to be an insane league right so um i'm i'm stoked on it so that's basically the gist of like the core concept of what this is about and that's barely scratching the surface though so some other cool things that you can do, right? You can use your gold to respect your passive points. And apparently the, the cost gets exponentially higher the higher level you are, right? But instead of having to burn through a shit ton of regret orbs, if you got a bunch of gold laying around and you need to respect some points, you can just use gold to do that now, which is, which is cool. I like that change. So uh, that's one. And there's a, there's another huge one that has, you know, we've all been asking for, for a long time, which is the currency trading market, right? So if you want to buy a divine orb for chaos, you can go in there, you can say, Hey, I, I have a hundred chaos and I want to buy a divine orb. You hit enter. And if there's someone that's selling it, it boom, automatically just goes into your inventory. You can go back there and pick it up. So this is huge. We've all been asking for something like this for a long time and they finally decided to implement it, which I think is just absolutely, um, a step in the right direction, right? So one of the things I was mentioning is you can buy black market items, right? So you can buy items from uh, Faustus when he's in the town. Um, he can have items that have generally what they said is higher modifiers. Um, you can invite him to your hideout, right? So if you ever want to respec, you can do it with him. If you want to do the currency exchange, you can do it with him. And you can buy the black market items and you can all do you can do all this without having to go to a separate area. It can be in your hideout, which is nice, right? Um, so with that, we'll move on to the next thing. There's three new in game bosses that are going to show up uh, what will happen is let's say you send out your team on a little convoy to go and sell your stuff uh, it could be that one of these bosses comes and captures them and then you get a notification saying yo this boss captured your guys right and you'll have one of three options right so you can either fight the boss and protect your guys you can if you think the boss is too strong pay whatever his ransom is to uh, have him let your people come back or you can just let your dudes die and risk losing all the, the stuff that they they have right so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how all of that works out uh, now on top of that uh, they are um, reworking two ascendancies one of them is the gladiator which i am 
fucking stoked for. Like I've been asking for a Glad and like Bleed rework for a long time. It's always been one of my favorite ascendancies, and it looks like it's gonna be like a fucking giga juice this league. So uh, I'm either gonna start Frostblade's Trickster because I know that, and that's what I've always done, or I might go off the wall and do a Bleed Glad and just kind of roll with the punches and see see if I can put together a good character. But um, Glad is one of the ones that they reworked. A lot of Bleed stuff in there, which is nice. A lot of Block stuff too. So I'm thinking about going like Max Block Bleed uh, Gladiator, something like that. Uh, they also reworked the raider so the raider is pretty much gone now and it is the warden is what it's called now and the um, it's kind of specializes in elemental damage and it's bringing tinctures back into the fold too so tinctures aren't going to be like they were before it's uh, not going to be like permanently applied it's going to have a duration and it's going to drain your mana once you run out of mana it expires and then there's a cooldown rate that goes to it so definitely some interesting stuff with with that um, ascendancy I, I looked over it a little bit and I think that <clears throat> maybe it requires some some po being and some stuff but uh could be could be interesting for sure um so the two new reworks super stoked for that right the other thing that is pretty much anything that's melee has gotten a buff like an insane buff so um we've been asking for melee buffs for a long time and they finally gave them to us so i'm stoked whenever whatever i play i'm playing melee i'll tell you that much right now so uh one of the big things to note is that melee totems are gone and that's another thing that we've been asking for melee totems just don't fit the archetype of a melee character and thank god they finally got rid of them so we're not going to have to use those anymore i think that's a really good change um Pretty much every gym that is a melee gym is getting its added damage like effectiveness like in some cases doubled in some cases more than doubled so overall i think if there was ever a time to play melee um I, melee's been kind of like i don't want to say dead but it hasn't been in a good spot since like um what was that league uh like legion <laughs> you know back when like the cyclone days so i'm i'm excited for a for a melee league for sure um on top of that there are going to be new roles for the base defenses on your armor items so going to have a lot more armor and evasion on our items as well as more um, it's multiplicative now with quality so when you put quality on an item you're going to get an insane amount more evasion armor fizz damage on your weapon so it's a it's a huge change and that's going to give us even more damage on top of that as well as life modifiers on items rolling way higher it used to be like on a chest armor you could go up to it was like 130 life and now it's going up to like 190 life so we're going to have a lot more access to life uh, in this new league too which i think is sick to counteract that, they did nerf um, Determination and Grace, but overall, I think that you're going to end up with more defenses and more life than you have in previous builds for sure. Um, one note is that they did change Endurance Charges, so it used to give you... Um, it was elemental resistances per endurance charge. And now every endurance charge that you have gives you 4% less elemental damage taken, which is a huge buff when you have endurance charges, right? So I think that a lot of people were talking that this is like a weird one, uh, especially since uh, Juggernaut got nerfed with like the um, armor applying to Ellie. But I think this might um, counteract that a little bit too. So we'll see. Uh, haven't really played a ton of juggernaut but um looks like it could still be good even though it has some some changes a lot of lot of block passives too um on the tree so i think um going max block max spell block um and there's something in the gladiator that gives you lucky block so if you can get to 75 percent attack and spell block with lucky you're going to be running pretty much it's around like a 92 percent block chance um on uh on a, a gladiator so i think that that's going to be super sick and i'm not sure that people are as hyped as they should be about that because block um you know 75 percent with no lucky is kind of rough because that means you're going to take you know 25 percent of the damage have going it up to 92 percent i think is is going to be a uh, something that people are going to spec into a lot this league uh let's move on so vol pact they're changing so if you're using a melee skill if you use vol pact you're going to have instant life leech on all melee skills which is crazy um flesh and stone is getting a change this is some of the stuff that i was talking about where you send your guys out and they come back and this is some of the things that you can look for when they when they come back so i think there's going to be some like giga juicers out there that just send these dudes out and just come back with you know three four tabs worth of just crazy loot it's going to be wild um Flesh and Stone is getting a buff too, so it's pretty much, if you're in Sand Stance and you're on top of an enemy, you're going to be taking 10% less damage from them. I think that might scale up as well. And then same thing with Blood Stance, you're going to be doing 10% more Fizz damage to them when you're right on top of them. I think that these numbers were the base numbers, so they probably will scale up. 
This is what I was talking about here with uh, sending your guys to run your maps for you. So you can just plug in a shit ton of maps and then have them go out and run them for you, which is which is absolutely crazy. Uh, the harder the map, the more likely the dudes are to die in the map. So you do have to be careful about um, balancing how hard the map is versus uh, the chance that they might die. I think he shows that right here in a second where um, it'll say 75% chance for the runner to die. He puts this in and it goes up to 95% chance. So got to be careful there. Um, they're, they're changing a lot of stuff on the passive tree and some, like some, some of the stuff uh, I'm sure you can find in the patch notes, but basically it's a lot of mana reservation or reduced mana cost, all stuff on like the Southern part of the tree. There's also a lot of bleed stuff, uh, a lot of impale stuff. So that Southern part of the tree, uh, where it was kind of hard to get reservation and some of those other minus mana costs. I think that they're fixing that with some of these tree changes. Um, another good thing that they're doing is pretty much every melee weapon uh, that I can think of is getting a base crit um, buff. So like a Imperial Claw, for example, used to be 7%. It's going up to 8%. So a lot of weapons that are fizz weapons are going to are, are gonna have a higher increased base crit now. And then spell, um, not spells, but wands are getting higher increased base attack speed. So if you're a wander that likes to use attacks, you're going to have uh, more access to attack speed too, which I think is really good. So um, there's some Warcry stuff in there. Like I said, there's some Impale stuff in there. Uh, you can also anoint your weapons now. This is what um, they're talking about. So I don't remember the name of the girl that is in there but you can basically find these um, runes while you're doing some of the league content and then apply them and you can get some crazy crazy um, anoints or not anoints but enchants to your weapons so that's just going to be another buff for a lot of the melee builds out there um, let's see talk about oh banner skills that's another huge one right this is the recombinator that i was talking about earlier um, banner skills basically no longer have a reservation um, but they require you to um it didn't say this in there. I had to look it up, right? But you have to you gain valor for every enemy that you kill, or for every attack that you do against a rare or unique enemy. And at base, max valor is 50. But there's some nodes on the tree that you can go all the way up to 80, right? So you can get 80 valor. So I think that what's going to end up happening for these like melee builds is you're going to go through the map, probably won't put your banner down at all, and then if you spec that 30 additional valor point, by the time you go in and fight the boss, you're going to have 80 valor, right? And so that multiplies all of the effects by eight, which is just insane. So some of these you can get like 32% more fizz damage. You can get life on block. You can get like 32% or 60 some odd chance to block and 60 some odd chance to suppress spell damage if you're using max valor. So I think that these banner skills are going to be used mostly for like fighting bosses. This is the currency exchange stuff that I was talking about right here, which is pretty huge. Uh, but yeah, I think you're going to be able to, to throw some banners down and just get like giga juice damage or giga juice defenses when you normally, let's say you're playing a, a melee build that doesn't have access to spell suppression normally if you can get you know 30 percent spell suppression on your gear and then you just drop a banner down and you have 60 percent spell suppression from just dropping a banner like you're going to have 100 percent spell suppression for the like the duration of a boss fight you know if, if you can throw some increased duration on there so think that this is going to be really used in some of those harder boss fights for sure uh they're reworking rage uh it seems like it's easier to get rage now but the effects are a little bit um buffed i've never really played too many rage builds but i'm sure that there's some people out there that could could weigh in a little bit more on the on the rage rework uh magic find is pretty much dead guys so if you were a dirty mf player uh rip to you because magic find is no more pretty much that's the long and short of it. Uh, they've introduced some new scarabs. Some of them look interesting. Uh, I am going to make a video going over uh, like the TLDR of the patch notes as well. Just kind of wanted to put one video out for this video that they released and then another one that's a little bit more in depth for the patch notes because I just spent about two hours going over all those too. So new scarabs look cool. They put a sixth map slot device in there. So you'll get your fifth one from doing the Maven invitation, the 10 way, and then you'll get your sixth one from doing your first T17 map. That's how you're going to acquire those uh, so more you know chance to put scarabs in there and even juice your maps up a little bit better the nameless seer uh, the scarab for the nameless seer is gone the same nameless seer can just randomly appear in any t16 or t17 maps that you run now so i think that's pretty cool just more chance at uh at getting some of those you know hard to find unique items and then he can also do this thing now where it's called like scrying a map where you can 
if there's a map that you don't like to run that has a really good divination card, if you come across him and he offers this, you can choose the map that you want and it will adopt the divination drops from the map that you want but don't want to run. You know what I mean? So if you uh, have a, ma a map that drops a mage blood card but you fucking hate that map, go in there and you say, hey, I want to run, you know, um, whatever the map is that you like to run, but I wanted to drop the maps from the, or the divination cards from that one. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, there is a new oil that's called a prismatic oil, and what that does is it allows you to anoint uh, notables that are like not shown on the tree. A lot, there's, so there's going to be some crazy new combinations of uh, anoints, I think. Uh, there's going to be new updated ritual base types. I looked at some of them, didn't really think any anything looked too good uh, from the base types, but uh, you know maybe if you use some of those, those niche builds might might get a little buff from them. You can now fight the King in the Mist, so the King in the Mist is back. And the only thing that he does not drop is he doesn't drop the That Which Is Taken jewel. Uh, but what he does drop, it looks the exact same, so it has the same art as the That Which Was Taken, but it's actually the Parandus Pact jewel from last league. So any uh, builds that use the Parandus Pact, you can now fight the King in the Mist and have a chance to get one of those, okay? Uh, here they're going over the, uh, the new Gladiator ascendancy so a lot of a lot of cool stuff in here the bleed explosions are still there and then this is actually really nice too bleeding is aggravated so um that basically they count as moving if you inflict bleed on someone so no more having to switch to a, a bow to have them you know with uh whatever ensnaring arrow all that bullshit don't have to do it anymore which is which is sick a um, couple more points here. So in any T16 or 17 map, you can now have a chance to come across the Wildwood. You can come across um, a Sentinel where it'll just drop for you. And you basically just choose when you want to drop it. And throughout the map, you can use a Sentinel. Really cool. And then same thing with Calandra mirrors. Uh, they'll, you'll come across a mirror every once in a while and you can reflect a piece of jewelry. So uh, a lot of cool things from some of the previous leagues are just now available in T16 and T17 maps. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Now this next one is huge for me because I enjoyed um, having the chance to get like voices and some cool cluster jewels and stuff and high level cluster jewels from simulacrums. But the grind of going 30 waves was just absolutely atrocious, dude. I hated it so much. And basically what they did is they just got rid of the first 15 waves and they made it to where you have a higher chance to drop unique jewels from the bosses now. So I'm actually really looking forward to, uh, to juicing some simulacrums and some uh, delirium mirrors and seeing if I can maybe get my hands on a little one pass of voices or something like that, you know? Uh, so that's that's sick. I'm excited about that. Some changes to chisels. So instead of just using a chisel and getting one quality on a map, you can now chisel your map for increased div card drops, increased scarab drops, um, quant and pack size. There's all different uh, chisels now. And instead of having to do, you know, I think it was on white maps, you'd have to use four, right? And then you'd have to, you know, use a bunch on different, like, um, rarity of maps. So you're going to use one chisel on a white map. It's going to go up to 20%. If you use a, on a yellow map, you get 10% per chisel. And then on red maps, you're going to get five. So it's only going to cost four chisels if you want to use it on a red map. So instead of scouring your maps to get the quality, uh, you can just use four of them on a T16 map and not have to worry about it, which is, which is cool, I think. Made some changes to T17 maps as well. So T17 maps were like, you know, they were supposed to be the, the bridge in between pinnacle bosses and uber pinnacle bosses. And I think they missed the mark pretty heavy on that. And so they realized that and they reworked them to where they're supposed to be much easier now. The monsters are going to have way less life. Um, so the T17 should be much easier to run. And you can also chisel those and vol those now too. So uh, I'm looking forward to running some T17 maps for sure. And then um, going to have more Valdo's bosses box of drops because last league i mean i played the shit out of last league and i got maybe two valdos boxes the whole time uh so they're increasing the drop rate of valdos but also um they they're pretty much doing that but leaving the amount of mage bloods that drop the same so it's gonna you're probably gonna have a shit ton of valdo boxes that are not worth much but at least you'll have the chance you know to to get one instead of just you know playing for hours and hours and hours and never even seeing one of the fucking things so uh looking forward to getting some valdos drops they did kind of hint at some new like campaign mechanics where there's some weird stuff that you're going to run across in the campaign. So always looking forward to, to new stuff. And then some quality of life things that they're putting in there. 
um, the waypoints, you no longer have to click them. You just run by them and they'll auto um, activate, which I think is sick. It should have been in the game a long time ago. Uh, they've made it to where you can pick up items from further away now. So like if an item is over here, instead of having to literally run all the way from here to here, you can just kind of like run to here and you'll auto pick it up if you click on it, which is, which is good. Some of the pinnacle bosses, I don't think all of them, but a lot of them are now going to have a big life bar going across the top. Uh, so you can see kind of like the progression of how much damage you're doing because one of my one of my gripes was like I, I never knew how quickly I was burning these bosses down I'd have to hover over them and kind of like you know when there's 50 mechanics going on and you're trying to see how much life the boss has left it's just kind of a pain so uh, I think that that's a really good change too now one thing you can do is hover over maps when you're in your atlas uh, like map screen and it'll show you all of the div divination cards that will drop there so I'm I'm actually really happy about that too and another thing that I noticed from looking at the patch notes is that uh, once you get your first, um, what are those called? When you, void stone. Once you get your first void stone, any T14 map that you hover over will show you what T17 maps can drop from it. Because I know for a while, I, I just thought that all T17 maps could drop from all T14 plus maps, but that's not the case. Some of them have designated drops. So if you're looking for a certain T17 map, once you get your first void stone, you can uh, hover over a map and it'll show you what the what T17 maps drop from it. So that's, that's huge too. And the last thing that I have in here is that that the auras, uh, any auras that you turn on will automatically be on if you die, which is huge. We've been wanting that for a long time, and that's finally another you know good thing that they did. So, uh, guys, that covers pretty much everything that they talked about in this video. I talked about it in about half as much time, it seems like, but uh, I would definitely recommend watching this and uh, you know kind of seeing everything for yourself. I'm excited as fuck. I can't wait. I'm going to take some time off from work and just grind the shit out of this league. So hopefully you guys are excited for it too. And uh, tomorrow I'll be dropping a video going over um, the TLDR of the patch notes because it was like 35,000 words in the patch notes and you can spend hours and hours looking at it. It's going to be mainly focused on some of the things that I think are interesting, right? So like if you're a minion player, I'm not going to go over minion stuff, right? But if you follow this channel and you play some of the builds that I've played, I'm going to cover everything that I think is interesting and, and pertinent it to uh, the, the play style that I have. So if you guys are interested, I'll be dropping that tomorrow. Uh, but with that, guys, I'll leave the video there. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, drop a like and a comment if you're hyped for this league, guys. With that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.